Anyway, this is, I would say, a typical Southwest Virginia mountain grass farm. Uh, what we are doing, we are harvesting grass through the beef production, and that is the main uh, income for this. Uh, row crops, uh, now none. We used to do corn, tobacco, but have learned just hay with our grass production through the gain on the cattle and we can sustain here. Uh, of course, as we all know, we're not getting rich, but uh, we still have a livelihood. Uh, these acres here, we keep between four and 600 steers and heifer stockers. No cows, we kept cows until just recently, but at an older age, uh, didn't really enjoy getting out in January uh, calving beef cows, so we have uh, remove the beef cows and it's all stocker now. Calves uh, come from local stock barns, have a excellent procuring agent who buys in the cattle sale barns for me and we get a lot of local calves. People who uh, keep by the, all their cows, I mean their calves every year, uh, which creates a problem. You have to keep so many different sizes because a man with 30 cows will bring uh, 25 calves everywhere from 300 to 700 pounds. And I try to take care of him and take all of his cattle. Then they have to be worked, processed, grouped into groups. We feed several different groups during the winter of different sizes. Uh, marketing, heifers, eight, eight and a quarter, steers, 850. Uh, Try to put very even, selective load lots together. In my opinion, there's nothing any more satisfying than a well-selected load of cattle that are uniform size, uh, weights, and everything. Uh, the cattle go to different Midwest people who have traded with us for many years. The stalker business has been just uh, in business like this, you must do something that you enjoy. We have always, until last year, had stock cows. We always keep only about 50. And that was basically to eat some of the rougher country down. Uh, I felt that stockers would not do as well. Uh, but with, I've always, we've always had stock calves. Uh, it's just been a way of life. And why? That was, part, that was part of the livelihood when I was growing up all the way through. Uh, last year started buying in July about this time and bought cattle every week up until the first of the year. Uh, spring cattle, I usually buy extra cattle to sell on the spring market. Uh, not, not many, but I will sell some smaller cattle on the spring sales. Uh, when the cattle are received, of course, they go through the routine vaccinations. Uh, we try to, of course, I'm a little bit different. I drench the cattle when they come in with semantic or a uh, drench dewormer along with all the vaccines, black leg, respiratory, uh, whatever we're using at the time, what is supposedly do the best deal. Uh, we worm again, of course, do the same thing over. I booster the vaccines in the spring before turnout. We usually try to turn out by first middle of April. Then uh, the middle of June, I use a pour, pour on wormer. And uh, this I have found to be very effective for fly control also. Um, I do not, if we have to castrate, I do put that off for about two weeks to let them get settled in, get through the ball and start eating. Uh, the vaccines, Basically, your respiratory, of course, uh, just a standard program there. Uh, antibiotics, whatever works at the time, if we need them. Uh, I have learned one thing, you do not brag about your health program because it can bite you real bad. Uh, usually, we are 1%. At, on occasion, it has gone much more than that. Last year, we were a little bit under 1% death loss. Uh, treatment, 
The major treatment of any stalker calf that comes in, you live with it. You check it twice a day, uh, and at the first sign, if you have second thoughts, if the calf has a health problem, it's too late. Because your first impulse, you better get him up and work on him right then. Uh, we have been very fortunate. Uh, this group of cattle have, there's been no pink eye or any uh, foot rod or crack foot in them. They have been nearly maintenance free. We use the bullets and the cattle rubs. All of our mineral feeders are situated to where they have to walk under them to get to the mineral boxes. Uh, and it works, uh, on most cases it works pretty good. We use permectin along with fuel oil as the carrier for it. I also use what I consider to be a pretty expensive mineral, but it does have uh, additives in it. I just use a good general mineral. And I think that helps as much as far as pink eye control and foot rot as can be. All right, this, this is an example of the heifers. Try to sell these heifers at approximately 825 pounds. 825 should be the pay weight on them. Uh, try to get the frame size, the quality of the animal about the same. As you see, these are mixed colored cattle here. So have to kind of watch that. Uh, but other than that, these cattle are not ready yet. They will be ready probably in two to three weeks to hit the exact weight. The finish is starting on some of them. You can see around their hip bones, the pins and everything that they're starting to get the finish on them. Uh, we're fortunate in this pasture, we have a little better grass. So uh, we are not supplementing any uh, protein on these cattle. Let's see. Also, I'd like to mention the water systems. I'm, uh, I like the large tires, especially since there's no plumbing in them. The cattle can stand in them and not break the pipe off and you don't have to come do plumbing work in the middle of the night or in the morning. The tires work. There is a float up on the bank there in a sump that controls the water level. It is always full. I do prefer to hand feed them. That way you get to look at all of them, check on all your health problems, and so on. I contract feed uh, ahead of time. I haven't for the last six months because the feed has been dropping all the time. So I'm going to ride it out and see what this corn does. And because as we all know, corn is the, the main, main ingredient on feed prices right now. I buy Southern States commodity now. It's actually cheaper than, and for the storage, I had to have storage for the gluten, soy hulls, and I bought cracked corn, and we mixed all that together. I can buy the mix now, actually as cheap or maybe cheaper, and it cuts out so much labor. This is a 14% uh, protein mix of soy hulls, uh, gluten, and corn. The gain on these cattle, uh, it's almost entirely uh, according to the season. Uh, this season we have been exceptionally dry. The gain is not near as good as it should be. Uh, the cattle will be sold at 850, maybe plus a little bit on 850. I'd like for the pay weight on the cattle when they go out to be near exactly 850, so they need to go. Uh, 870 or something like that. The job that Mr. Elsie does when he buys cattle for me, they are so even, so put together, it takes a lot of the problem off of me. And quoting someone, the quality cattle when they're bought, they're half sold then. The cattle are walked to the barn usually three or four days before the final sort. I sort the cattle out in the, in the scale barn. Uh, we get a uniform load lot. I like to, I usually like to sell two loads at a time because we have lots and availability of grass. And the cattle go have the availability of dry hay. I like to put dry hay in them at least 12 hours before they go on the truck. Uh, they seem to ride better. Uh, we have no problem with shrink. I will shrink the cattle to uh, percent, of course, 
in the way up and the, usually the shrink is very good. They're weighed back on the other end and we have no problem with shrinkage. My marketing plan on cattle in load lots is 95% with people that we have been dealing with for the past 25, 30, 35 years. They are all from eastern central Iowa. They visit here, they know the cattle. I can represent the cattle and even I know their schedule when they have pens ready. I usually try to have some cattle ready for them. I have had dealings with these people over so many years that it just seems like the thing to keep doing because it works for both of us. Uh, we weigh the cattle here. This barn is approximately 200 yards off the paved road, but it is solid so weather has no problem with getting trucks in and out. Uh, we can handle two or three loads at a time with no, no serious problems with uh, pinning or different places. I usually like to weigh the cattle, put them on water and hay for a couple of hours or so before they're loaded. And I'd like to stress the importance of the truck drivers. Uh, use some of the best truck drivers in the country. They get the job done. When they leave, you don't worry about them getting there. They will do the job. So I think that's awful important.